Hi, welcome to this video in which we will explore how to reduce the heating or cooling load while maintaining proper ventilation. You can save significant amount of money on your cooling and heating bills, so watch this video till the end to benefit from it. On this channel Synergy Files, we aim to inspire budding engineers and technicians for a better, more sustainable world. Please subscribe to the channel to get notifications of our latest videos. Nature has a way of doing things in the most efficient of ways. Many a times it inspires our ingenuity and engineering. Take the example of a well-known bird, the crane. One might have seen pictures or videos of it standing on one leg while in icy waters. This is done to reduce the heat transfer. But behind the more obvious behavior, there's another fascinating mechanism in place that further prevents the loss of body heat. There's a little biological heat exchanger in the crane located in the lower part of its body. This heat exchanger allows the transfer of heat between the outgoing hot blood to the legs and the oncoming cold blood from the legs. The transfer of heat between the two blood streams reduces the temperature difference between the two. This means that the outgoing hot blood is not that hot anymore and it will lose lesser heat when it finally hits the portion of the leg that is immersed in water. It also means that the incoming cold blood is not as cold going into the body. Thus with this simple heat exchange mechanism, the animal saves a lot of thermal and in turn metabolic energy. Based on the same principle, we have a simple device called the air to air heat exchanger. And this is used for preserving the hot and cold environment of our dwellings while maintaining ventilation requirements. If we look at our houses, in a sense they breathe in air and they breathe out air, also known as ventilation. Older houses, because of their drafty nature of construction, tend to allow more air in and consequently also ventilate more air out. Modern houses have a more airtight construction. This is due to the usage of elements like double doors, double glazed windows and other snug fit ceiling mechanisms around the openings. There is still some amount of air that gets in. In fact, it is important that it does get in and leaves the dwelling. For a healthy living, the UK building regulations require one air change every two hours. So with that ventilation requirement, there is a problem of energy loss. In other words, we do want the air to change, but we do not want the energy in the air to change. If we are looking to heat the house, then we do not want the incoming air from outside to be much cold. Likewise, if we are trying to cool the space, we wouldn't want the incoming air to be too hot. For this purpose, we can use the air to air heater, also sometimes referred to simply as air exchanger. The process through which the energy is retained is called mechanical ventilation heat recovery. There are various designs of air to air heat exchanger. Some are passive solid state devices and have no moving parts like the recuperator, while the others have moving components like a thermal wheel. Using the recuperator is a very cost effective way of reducing your energy bills. Most of them come with a fan that consumes low power, 12 watt to 40 watt. There are three different kinds of recuperators available in the market. These are vertical flat panel, horizontal flat panel and cellular. Cellular recuperators reach the highest efficiency levels of up to 89% heat recovery. If any house or office space is efficiently draft proof, with the only way for the air to enter or leave the building being through the air exchanger, then significant gains can be made in reducing the heating or cooling bills. It should be noted that in the UK, 57% of the energy used in the domestic sector is used in space heating. In fact, heating, ventilation and air conditioning accounts for a significant portion of the global energy use. Air conditioning has been identified as the key area to focus for reducing energy use and carbon emissions. By using air to air heat exchangers, we can not only improve the quality of air inside our dwellings, get rid of the water vapor buildup, but also save energy on a very large scale. 
It has been experimented that through the use of good insulation, draft proofing, and compliance with modern building standards, many houses have been made that can be heated with the metabolic heat of occupants alone. In these houses, air to air heat exchangers were used as standard. And with this, the video is concluded. Please make sure you hit the like button if you learned from the video and if you would like more such videos to be made. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your attention.